What's up, everybody? It's Keefe, and you're watching another edition of GhostCultMag.com's weekly ritual, our rock and metal news live stream every week, everywhere on the web. I'm hanging out with you all on TikTok. I'm everywhere for this streaming experience, wherever you can see us. The best experience for this show is always YouTube, but we're hanging out on. We've been big on X the last few weeks. I'm not sure if it translates to a spaces or not, but uh, hopefully it does. And uh, I'm super stoked to be back with you on this Friday Eve, late Thursday afternoon, early evening on the West Coast of America, everywhere else in the world. It's Friday somewhere. It's five o'clock somewhere. I hope you guys have had a great week. I have had a great week. I'm pretty exhausted today. I went to go see Alkaline Trio last night here in San Francisco. It was marvelous on every level. They were amazing. Uh, good to see you all here who are joining Ben Self. Uh, Culticon is here. We know a thing or two about cults. What's up, y'all, on the tick of the talk? Ask some questions. Get Ask smart questions. Get smart answers about rock metal, punk rock, death metal, doom metal, prog metal, everything metal, and rock. And if you give us a donation, we would love it. It will put your question to the front, but I'll probably answer all the questions anyway, because that's kind of what I do. What's up, Travis Smith, 4420 or 4420? What up, what up, what up? Thanks for being here. Uh, let us... Bring to the stage the deck. Let's see. And this in, but that's the wrong orientation. There we go. Me in the corner. The Buddy Keefe. The Buddy Christ. Right there, if you get that reference. I appreciate you, and you are a Kevin Smith fan, much like me. Uh, let's get with the uh, dispensing of the pleasantries and right on to the housekeeping of the show, as I like to do. So, uh... End of March, man. Where did the first quarter of this year go? It whizzed the frick by. I don't know about you, but it whizzed by for me. Uh, I've been, as everybody knows, I've been very public. It's been a bit of a trying time personally for me, but I'm keeping persevering and uh, I've been listening to a lot of great bands, a lot of great music. What are you listening to? We're going to do some new music Friday at the end of the show, toward the end of the show, for you to check out and enjoy. Looks like we got some folks here on the tube of you. Let's see if I can see the comments. None yet, but uh, hang in there with us. Sonic Taboo is here. What's up, Sonic Taboo? We went late a, a little. We went live a little late this week. Um, I had to postpone by a few hours to get some work done. But uh, here we are. We're ready to rock. And hopefully, I did a good job getting you prepared. So here is the housekeeping. The show, the announcements, the announcements, stuff we talk about. Let us kick it off once again. As we do every week, this show is dedicated to Sonia Ramos, Sonia Shredder on Instagram, Guitar Luthier, Metalhead, Battling Stage 4 Cancer. Please donate to her GoFundMe. I almost would much rather you donate something to her than donate to us on our platforms, but we also appreciate donations. But we're just trying to raise money for her medical care. Sonia rules, and we want to show the metal community rules as well in support of her, a person who is awesome, having a tough time. Also, also just a reminder, uh, if you can't tune into these shows or you can't, uh, you know, watch these live streams, we have a newsletter that goes out every weekend, one or two times a weekend. That's it. Not every single day like everybody else in the metal world. Um, we round up this show, our New Music Friday list, big stories of the week, all our big interviews, all in one little email blast. You open it once, you click once or twice, that's it, you're happy. Um, I want to mention, I didn't really put this in the news, but I think it's becoming a bit. Mark's Metal Minute is here. What's up, Mark? Good to see you. You know what time it is if you're watching the show. Valvren13 is here. What's up? What's up? Um, we Are The Pit, which is another music website similar to this one that has been owned and run by Warner Brothers Music. I don't know if people know that Warner Brothers, which is the owner of many metal uh, labels and also rock and also other things, punk rock, Fueled by Ramen, Roadrunner. Uh, you know, so much stuff is owned by Warner Brothers. So that's the same label that has Slam of God and Deftones and, and Disturbed and so many bands. Uh, we are the pit shutting down next week during the week. They're not emailing anymore. They have put an announcement on their socials. Uh, I'm sorry to see anybody over there losing a job. Um, very few people who do what we do get paid or make money at this. And, um, you know, I know uh, Michael Pemintel is a dude who we've circled each other in the universe of metal journalists for a very long time. Guy's excellent. Uh, before Michael was there, Cat Jones ran We Are The Pit. So, you know, I'm sad to see it go. If you were a fan, let me know. But, you know, hang out with us here. We have the same function. Uh, just not as much corporate money behind us. Actually, zero corporate money behind us. But, you know, whatever. 
Um, but I'm sad to see them go. So we have newsletters. We are over 10,000 on Instagram. If you're here watching on the gram, thank you personally. And if you're watching everywhere else, we like to get those numbers up. So TikTokers, give us a sub. YouTube, let's get that following up and over where it should be and all the other things. So we're on all the socials. Um, by the way, I was today years old. Uh, I don't know if you're on Blue Sky. Cadaver's Crow is here. Cadaver's Crow, uh, ghost cultist on hiatus, I suppose. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. We love, we heart you. We heart you a lot. Uh, you had uh, made me cry in the middle of the night when I posted that meme and you posted your answer. I got one big tear in my eye, legit. Um, I found out today that Blue Sky fans call their tweets skeets. And the owner of Blue Sky hates the idea that skeet is a tweet, but on Blue Sky. So please keep calling it skeets because I think that's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, I already cursed that it. it's not even the five minute or nine minute mark. But anyway, thanks for being here, all of y'all. I appreciate y'all all being here. So we're on all the social things. Also, also, if you're tired of social media, you could just sign up for our Discord or sign up for our Reddit and get a direct feed of all our best content right to you every single second of every day. I know a lot of people that just follow the Discord chime all day long or just Reddit notifications on their phone, and that's how they get all their news. I had a few people tell me at the Alkaline Trio show last night that they don't do social media for music news at all because I asked people, hey, where do you get your music news? I'm just curious if there's a a way we can get more people to dig what we do. But, uh, you know, just curious. Just curious. All right, time for the features here. Ghost Cult, let's get into it. This is the big interviews we did this week and some special, special things. You have a couple of days left, less than three days, to sign up to win two VIP tickets to Riot Fest to see the comeback of Slayer. Riot Fest is going to announce their full lineup any day now, probably in sometime in mid-April uh, is about when they usually do it. But Slayer was their big first announcement. It is the very first comeback show of Slayer's only three shows so far that I think are going to happen at all this year in, in 2024. You enter to win on our site. The link is in our description. The link is in our link tree. Your bum is on my lips. The link is in our link tree. Don't let this opportunity go by. We are not doing the selecting. The selecting is being done uh, programmatically. You have many chances to enter if you follow all the things. Um, you know, there's no law that says you have to stay followed, but we like to keep you followed. Uh, uh, Ying Barlison is here. BC Fever is here. The Hollets of Horror is here. Oh, the Hall of Horror. Sorry, it looks like Hollets. And uh, Blackie Chan 888 is here. I want to say, Blackie Chan, you sent me the nicest direct personal message uh, a while back, like a week and a half ago when you first followed or when you first interacted with us. And I want to just say thank you. People do watch these shows and they do contribute and they do become a part of our community. And I'm really grateful because honestly, every, I just talked about, we are the pit shutting down. Every follower we have is a follower. And somebody's on Twitch watching. That's cool. What's up, Twitch? I'm glad to see you. Sub if you're not subbed. We appreciate it. YouTube, same with you. Omar's here. You had one job. Watch your potty mouth. Oh, you. Shut up and be a co-host. That's my co-owner and partner, Omar Cordy, on YouTube. Join the co the show and co-host with me sometime, and then I'll try not to swear or say, uh. Anyway, Riot Fest contest, this is your chance. And if you don't care to go to Chicago or you don't care about Slayer, maybe you have a friend who does. Share it with them. Where's the battle vest? You know, it's not comfortable to sit in this chair and wear the battle vest. I don't know if you know that. It doesn't. It's not seamless. You know, I have a lot of patches, and it's very thick with patches, and then it's all puffy looking. I don't know. I'm puffy looking enough, but I am wearing my cool uh, meth syndicate shirt, seal kiss from a rose. That looks like the guns of roses shirt. Baby. Anyway, I'm not going to sing today. I'm I'm all screamed out from the punk show last night. Um, happy birthday, evil Rob. Ormor is in this picture. Omar Cordy on YouTube. Uh, we've been celebrating birthdays. A lot of March babies at ghostcultman.com. First Omar Cordy on St. Blatrick's day. Uh, the second was Pags. We shouted out Pags and Mrs. Pags, both celebrating a birthday last week. And then also right on top of that, Evil Rob of Evil Rob Photography. He's been with us almost the longest of anybody in the photography game. Here it goes, called In America. And uh, grateful he is my friend. You lot are brilliant. You lot are brilliant. You're brilliant. You're terrific, as uh, Keanu said. So happy birthday, Evil Rob. Go buy a photo. Go buy some photos from that guy. He is uh, down in, in New Orleans photographing Crowbar all weekend. Holy shit. I'm jealous. Anywho, interviews this week here at the channel. Martin Gonzalez, you probably know him best for his work with the anime Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth Company. But Martin is an accomplished 
shredding guitarist and composer. He's got his own band, Atomic Guava, uh, made up by a bunch of uh, Berkeley students, uh, like himself, Berkeley graduates. And then he just came out with his first solo album, uh, Suspiro, which means like a heavy sigh of relief or a sigh of grief, whatever it is. Uh, we had an incredible in-depth in interview with him. He's a, a sweetheart of a dude and an incredible guitar player and composer. And I got him to pick his favorite anime, uh, which is pretty dope. I probably should ask him if he liked the manga, if he had a favorite manga. Also, also, one of my favorite people to talk to and probably one of the bands I've been talking to every year since we went die hard on video since the pandemic Lovato is Joey Vera of Armored Saint. I joke with him that we talk to that band about every year or every 14 months. Um, uh, Armored Saint just kicked off a tour last night with Queens, right? We're covering that tour tonight. Omar, stay tuned to your text in case there's a problem. Probably not. Uh, we are covering that tour tonight in Sacramento. Omar Armored Saint is also doing a couple of headline shows here and there. I think San Francisco this weekend. Don't know if I'm going as much as I I'm a diehard Armored Saint fan and John Bush. I really can't do like two shows in three days or back-to-back -back shows right now with my help. I'm trying to baby myself. But Joey's dope, and he gave us the lowdown on Armored Saint. We talked all about bass playing. I used to be a bassist. I'm pretty knowledgeable. We talked all about his favorite bassists ever, regardless of genre. And we talked about the next Armored Saint record, which is already being uh, written. Not recorded, but written and probably coming out, hopefully, in 2025. Joey Vera of Armored Saint, everybody. Also, also, this is While She Sleeps. While She Sleeps' new album, Self Hell, is out tomorrow, this weekend, as you're watching this. And I talked to uh, Lawrence Taylor, not that guy, the quarterback sex from LT, as Wu-Tang Clan used to say, but Laws, Lawrence Taylor, the vocalist of While She, she Sleeps. It's our second interview. Say that, name, say that name five times fast, While She Sleeps. We talked to Lawrence. He's a swell guy. We talked to him before. He's been very supportive of Ghost Cult. That band is becoming huge, and they've been very kind to us and promoted our stuff that we've shared with them. So I'm really grateful. Serpent Conjuration is here. Ben Hale 25 is here. What's up, my regulars, my diehards, my everydayers, my every weekers, my every streamers? Thanks for being here, man. We don't go live every day. So this is like I try to make this thing special so people can key in and tune in and stay tuned in. And I am grateful to everybody watching. So While She Sleeps, huge record out tomorrow. Arguably one of their best. I know everybody says this new record's my best, but I think this one is their best record. All right. Also, also, ran today. I think it's the final, the next to last bit of coverage from our Riot Fest adventures last fall. We've just been slowly slogging through these little fun interviews. And so this hardcore metal band through and through uh, is amazing. They had an incredible journey. They were supposed to play Riot Fest as the first band of the day. They were a brutal hardcore metal band. And then there was a rain out on the final day of the festival, and they were told, hey, you guys are canceled, because they canceled a bunch of huge bands. And they said, listen, we drove across the country to play. We have fans that bought tickets to Riot Fest just to see us at Riot Fest. Please let us play, even if we have to go on against like The Cure at the end of the night. They played at the same time as The Cure, and they had a nice pit in front of their stage. They had a little bit of fans there. It was really fresh, and I'm really proud of them. And if that's the kind of perseverance you have to have to make it in this business. They got a brand new single out. They got dope music. They're playing a bunch of shows and fests. Stay tuned to that band through and through. I'm a big fan now. All right. Also, also, this show and all those interviews can be heard on the Ghost Cult Magazine podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Please follow, like, and subscribe. Give us a five-star review if you think we're cool. Give us a zero-star review if you think we suck. I stand by my words. We read every comment. We re respond to most all of them, as long as they're not horrible. Um, and again, X just blowing up. 21 people watching this show on X. I'm so stoked. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, also, also, because I don't have enough things to do, I am the co-host of the Glacial League Musical Podcast, Beer Metal and Swearing, Vinyl, other things. We just wrapped up a series on Slayer's first iconic six albums, and now we did a Chaser, so we do the drink, and then we do the Chaser episode in between. We might do another Chaser this week. I'm not sure. We probably should have made that one, too. We welcomed in our friend Danny Nichols of Torchlight Parade. Love Danny. Uh, actually got to meet him, have breakfast with him, go record shopping with him when I was in St. Louis to meet Nick as well. And we just nerd out and reviewed Bruce Dickinson's new solo record, The, Magic Pro the Mandrake Project. Bruce is also at WonderCon this weekend, by the way, uh, signing books and stuff and records probably, as well as the not-so-great new album by Ace Freely, 10,000 Volts. It's got like three good songs on the rest of it. I'm not sure. But listen to the podcast and find out what we thought of it. Uh, 
yeah. Anywho, also, also, just uh, we did a lot of metal premieres this week. The one I wanted to highlight uh, was uh, Blackguards Stand Silent from the brand new album by Per Wilberg. Per Wilberg is the former keyboard player for Opeth. He was in Candlemas. He's in Spiritual Beggars. He's got a solo career. He's got a new solo album out right now on FDA Records. Records. And um, he put out a new video today. It's a long track with a very fascinating, brilliantly made video. And I highly recommend you go check it out here at Ghost Cult or at Pear's socials. He's very active on social media. All right, all right. Just once again, you could buy ads directly from us. You can sponsor this video. You can sponsor our YouTube channel if you want to. We are open to sponsorships and partnerships like we have affiliate deals, but we also have a media partnership, Lamb Goat Media from the folks at lambgoat.com. They're our friends, and uh, they helped do that. They basically made that Slayer giveaway work, so credit to them. Uh, you know, Follow and support them as well, and if you want a you see the ads on ghostcultmag.com if you want to really get into uh, reaching a massive audience for your band, your brand, your music, anything metal-related or rock-related, check out lgmedia.com or Limbo Media. All right. Also, also, just shout out to our affiliate partner, Sticker Mule, your one-stop shop for custom die-cut stickers, especially if you have a band, but they also do other kinds of stuff, keychains, magnets, merch, posters, flyers, shirts, all the things, probably eventually hats, I'm sure. Sticker Mule, if you sign up at our link in the description, you get $10 off your first order. We get $10 off our next order. Rock and roll. That's what I say. Hail Sticker Mule. Good times. All right. Ran through all the minutiae quickly this week. And now let's get to the news rundown. Let's take a sip of this seltzer. I do not have a liquid death this week. I have a Trader Joe's sparkling lime. How's everybody doing out there? Hey, Concepts Cafe is here. Concepts Cafe, we have a video coming where we're going to unbox and drink the ministry coffee. You guys were kind enough to send us a box to uh, to us, and I'm going to grind that up and drink it and make a whole video. We're going to edit up nicely by my partner. Uh, we unboxed and showed the Cannibal Corpse coffee here on the show months ago. Pretty, pretty freaking fresh. I'm a big coffee nerd. I drink coffee constantly, especially now that I can't drink other things anymore except seltzer and coffee. And water. So, yeah, here's the news rundown. It's time for some stories. And we always start with the festivals. So, time for the metal festivals. A few less this week. This story will not go away. Blue Ridge Rock Fest, holy shit, right? We, we did what the F last week. Now it's holy shit. Um, you know, we brought you the news that they were selling passes to Blue Ridge, even though they claimed they, had, they weren't. Then their spokesperson came on and said, We promise we didn't sell any tickets, but they definitely did. And then some other BS was uncovered. Shout out to Tank the Tech. Please don't leave our channel to go watch Tank the Tech just yet. But after this show, go watch Tank the Tech's third video on this subject. And he talked to, he's a, not, he's a tour manager and he's got many, many connections in the music business. And he said that he did some snooping and some sleuthing around and he doesn't think this thing is happening. And I also kind of concur based on what I've heard that this thing is not going to happen this year. They have not booked enough big bands to try to make this festival happen. They claim they didn't sell any tickets. It was an accident, but it clearly says 2024. That's right off their website. Uh, we put the red X to it. So shout out to Tank the Tech for good journalism from a guy who's not a journalist, he's just a streamer and, and a metal YouTube celebrity and personality. But I appreciate his, uh, you know, stick to on this story. And, you know, don't, you know, like I, we've covered Blue Ridge Rock Fest. I'm not trying to shit on them, but like they've done a horrible job of being a festival in general. And then you have the perfect storm of stuff that happened last year. You check out our previous videos and posts on the subject. Also, also the New England Metal and Hardcore Fest, kind of breaking my heart a little bit, announced their dates for 2024. And of course, they're at the same time as Riot Fest with Slayer. Uh, still, uh, this is about a week later than it used to be. I felt like it was going to be the same weekend this year, but it's not. Uh, we don't know any of the bands yet. Uh, you do know that a Kill Switch Engage record is coming later this year. I'd say it's a good bet that they will be on it. And uh, with all some of these bands coming out of retirement, it's entirely possible that they will book some humongous bands. I think it's pretty fresh. That's September 21st and 22nd for those watching at home or on the podcast and listening. We are up to 30 people watching this stream. Amazing. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. Download Fest is just a few months away. They added a bunch of new bands, but none other than the biggest of all so far, 
that they've added. They already have a you know the headliners are set, most of the lineup is set, but they're still adding cool quality bands. Kerry King will bring his solo band to an exclusive UK performance at Download Fest. You know that he's already joining Atlanta Got a Mastodon on their co-headline tour this summer and some other festivals. I think Kerry's first show ever will be at Welcome to Rockville. The guy's got balls of steel. I'm gonna take my band out and play in front of 50,000 kids for the first thing I've ever done. And you know, it'll be his new music and some Slayer, I'm sure. And uh, very excited to see Mark Asagata of Death Angel as the vocalist, Phil Demmel as the lead guitarist, along with Carrie, as well as Paul Bostep on the drums. We do love you, Paul. We love me some Paul Bostep. I'm hoping to get an interview here. Uh, the Secrets Media is here. Scooter with the thumbs up and the wave. Great to see you, Scooter. Uh, terrific Kenefic is here. Is that Tim Kenefic? I don't know if you changed your screen name. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. All right. This is really cool. Loud as Hell Festival, to which Ghost Cult is a media partner, has announced their full lineup. Uh, this is insane. Uh, Beyond Creation is a band I have not seen in over a decade. Progressive technical death metal from Montreal or Quebec, I believe. French-Canadian for sure. Incredible band. Like, way ahead of their time. And then I think they just never got past a certain point of big. Malignancy, the great New York uh, death metal legends, Vitriol, the up-and-coming death metal legends, and Green Jelly, who I just saw a few months ago with my friend Rebecca, and uh, many other bands, The Convalescents, uh, so many killer bands on this poster. And again, we are a media partner. If you look and squint really, really tiny, you can see our logo in the description. Very cool. I think it's cool. We are, we are a media partner for quite a few festivals this year. Fest 2022 has announced their dates. This is always usually a lot of punk rock, emo, metalcore, and hardcore. October 25th, 26th, and 27th, late in October, as opposed to early October when a ton of things are happening. That's down in Gainesville, Florida, in the Panhandle, if I'm not mistaken. Not sure that I want to. It's Florida Gators country. Not sure that I really want to go down there, but I love this logo. It's like weird ghosts, cigarettes, pizzas, amplifiers, cherries for cherry tattoos if you're punk. Funky glasses, beer cans, weed leaves, guitars, some other stuff. Kind of looks ribbed for her pleasure. All right. Fest 22 will keep you posted on the full lineup when it goes live. This is a bummer. Oblivion Access is not going to happen this year. They hadn't announced any bands. They've announced a bunch of shows. Oblivion Access has happened two years in a row. We covered it last year. It's been phenomenal. Uh, perhaps I'll put a link to our coverage I know one of the bookers personally. I met him a few times. Really sweet guy. Great guy. Like the heart is in it. And they announced today over social media, it's with heavy hearts, we announced that Oblivion Access will not be taking place in 2024. The past two years have been something we cherish. Thank you to everyone who came to the fest, the shows, bought merch, shared, performed, everyone who had taken a hand in behind the scenes work in order to make a way happen. Skip, 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 skip. They are refunding the people who made the Blind Faith Pass purchases, which was like buy the pass to the show before we announced the lineup. A lot of people did, apparently. Uh, it takes about 10 business days for their refunds to come through the Dice app. And, you know, they've been doing Oblivion Access since it was Austin Terror Fest in 2017, and maybe they will come back someday. Don't know what the future of this is, but I am bummed for that guy and those folks. All right, just like this meme of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, and then moving forward, concerts, let's do it. The big one, I, I got this one wrong. I'm going to say when I get it wrong, I tell you. I had predicted that I said, oh, Corn is going to, maybe they're not going to sell out that soccer stadium. They did. They sold out BMO Stadium. It took a week, but they sold it out. That's the whole soccer stadium, plus I'm guessing a field area of seats and a pit. And because uh, they're not going to perform far away from people with nobody on the floor, right? And then... Uh, you know, they announced this big festival. I didn't think they could sell out the whole soccer stadium, but apparently I was wrong. And then I said, oh, you know what they're going to do? They're going to do that show in October and then and announce after that, they're going to announce a big headline tour into 2025 for, you know, maybe they'll play the whole album. I think they're going to just play the whole album that one night, except for Daddy, which I think Jonathan Davis doesn't want to do anymore. Brooklyn Myth is here. My favorite, my favorite fan, Brooklyn Myth. Great to see you. Happy Thursday, almost Friday, where you are. We're just uh, running down the new show. We started a little late today. We're already on to the concerts, tours, and one-offs, one-off shows. So Korn, Gojira, and Spirit Box have announced a huge headline tour of America. Tickets go on sale. The pre-sale is today. Uh, if you want a, a pre-sale code and it's still on and you got money, try Twist or Freak in the pre-sale. 
um, which I imagine a lot of those tickets are going to get snapped up already. And then, uh, yeah, uh, Koba Corn, Gojira, and Spirit Box. What a great one, two, three for a, for a concert tour. And they announced an extensive U.S. tour. So I think maybe we'll hear most of the debut album on that tour, plus a few hits of the Corn hits, and then Gojira and Spirit Box with nice sets to open. Very exciting. Also in huge tour news, Iron Maiden has gleefully announced direct support to their upcoming The Future Past tour in North America is The Who, the Mongolian folk metal band. Uh, I am a little surprised by this great band, not because of the band. They're on Better Noise Music, but it is uh, actually quite tremendous of them. Hey, Brooklyn Miss has also joined in on uh, TikTok. If you're looking for Omar, he's on YouTube. Uh, Heaven and Hell 92 is here. Thomas was here, is here, still here. Um, thank you for liking the live. What a supporter, Brooklyn Miss. You're awesome. As soon as we have some shirts made up, we just send you one uh, or some other merch. Um, okay, Gate Creeper, who dropped a new song this week off their upcoming new album, they announced a killer tour. Look at this. This is crazy. Uh, Undeath, Gate Creeper, Undeath, Jarhead, Fertilizer, and Final Gasp that just dropped a sick record. This kicks off in late May in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Gate Creeper's an Arizona band, so it makes sense to start in the Southwest. And then doing a huge loop of the Southwest, the Pacific Northwest. You're coming to Sacramento and San Francisco. Maybe I'll go to Rickshaw Stop, Los Angeles, and then Mesa, Arizona for the record release show on June the 8th. Too bad it's not June the 6th, International Day of Slayer Day. Uh, also, also, I mean, so many cool tours have been announced. Summer Slaughter, red alert, y'all. Summer Slaughter is probably coming back. Uh, they definitely have made an announcement along with Sumerian Records, the former sponsor of the tour. They're definitely coming back. There's definitely going to be a huge announcement soon. And I'm hyped for this. I went to many a Summer Slaughter, July and August 2024, the dates. They have not announced any bands, U.S. and North America only. There was a European version of Summer Slaughter, and I think a South American version of Summer Slaughter at one time. And, oh, heart me. Thank you, Brooklyn Miss. And uh, they started to leak out the cities the bands are from. Uh, no, Necrophages will not be on this tour. However, I think it's really cool that Summer Slaughter is coming back. I'm very excited. They haven't had one since 2019. So hopefully we get some great bands announced soon. This is pretty cool. Former Ghost Cult interviewee Taylor Waring and his stoddard psychedelic doom band Murloc has announced the Calamities tour of the West, Midwest, and other locales starting in Billings, Montana on May the 7th and going all the way until May the 24th back in Boise. Murloc is also from the Pacific Northwest. We've interviewed them. they got a cool album out right now. Great social media personality. Murloc is on TikTok. One of the coolest bands on TikTok in metal. Also, also, uh, there's a lot of bands with Stoned in their name, uh, especially Stoned or Doom bands. So Stoned Nomads, uh, promoted by Gravitoid Presents, they have a record label now, is doing a 2024 summer tour in support of their new EP, Beyond the Gates, and they are getting direct support from our homies, Red Beard Wall. Aaron of Red Beard Wall, waiting for them to have a new record so we can do an interview with Aaron. We've known Aaron for a very long time uh, via the internet and social media stuff, but we've never actually interviewed Aaron, and I love his band, so I really want to. I hope you're hearing this, Aaron, and you come on. Come on, podcast, or come on the video. Necrot dropped a new single this week. Their album draws ever closer. I did an interview that's coming up soon with Luca from Necrot as somebody with a small dick energy and San Francisco revs their motorcycle. Uh, Summer Slaw, yeah, it should be, yeah. So, yeah, Scooter makes a good point. I hope that Summer Slaughter is more te death and te tech death metal orientated, which is what it was to begin with. It was purely death metal and tech death. And then Sumerian came on as a sponsor. And look, Sumerian bands are, they have a lot of death core. They have a lot of progressive metal. They have a lot of other things that are not metal. I don't want to, you will not see Bad Omens and Poppy, who are coming up later in the show, on this tour. But you will see, hopefully, some bands. I wouldn't be surprised, not rooting for them, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if one pinnacle Sumerian band, uh, upper echelon band, Oceano, or they might be independent now, uh, Veil of Maya, BT Bam, you might see them because they just have that, you know, they just have those relationships. But I agree with you, Scooter. The best Summer Slaughters were all the tech depth. I once saw three Summer Slaughters the same year just to see Necrophages three times. That's how crazy I am and how much I love death metal. 
All right, Unearth. This is dope. I would really love to come out for this, but you know who knows. Unearth is doing the oncoming storm in its entirety for its 20th anniversary, June 15th at Big Night Live in downtown Boston. Doors at three, so this is going to be an all-day show. Unearth, Bleeding Through, also Friends to the Show. Overcast, Reuniting for a Show. Fuming Mouth, Killer Band, All Out War, Friends to the Show. Apes, and more to be announced. Um, this could be, I don't know, I've never personally been to Big Night Live. I think they have at least one big stage. I don't want like 11, 12, 14 bands trying to cram into a day. Let's keep the one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's not make it more than nine or 10 guys because this is too many. Eight hours, 10 hours is not enough time for all these bands. Bleeding Through should definitely get a full set, like 45 minutes to an hour. Under Obviously has to play an hour and a half. Overcast should play at least 40 minutes. Fuming Mouth at least a, a bit of time. So you can't really, you're running out of room, runway. You know what I'm saying? Run out of runway. But anyway, Unearth, I'm stoked for you. Congratulations. This is sick. I just found out about this right before the show. Green Day. I, I predicted this one, but they didn't do it with the timing that I predicted. Green Day is going to play a special, intimate for them. They just play baseball stadiums now. They're going to play the Fillmore in San Francisco next week on the second tickets go on sale tomorrow. They will absolutely sell out in two seconds because the Fillmore holds up about 1,000 people max. I've seen many a great show at the Fillmore and I really would love to see Green Day do Gilman Street or, you know, they're doing Fillmore. I'm not complaining, but the tickets are going to be dumb, sold out quick. Um, Link of Feel Good joined. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, let's see. Boy, we got a lot of people watching the live. A lot of people over on X. If you're on X, let's see some comments. I wonder if I can – I don't want to get an echoey thing happening, but maybe I can um, – should have did this beforehand i don't want to have an echo but i I'd like to kind of like spy in and see who's watching and if you're dropping comments maybe i can join in in the comments here hello if you're here say hi all right um anywho, i don't hear an echo but you tell me on x if you hear an echo you might so green day intimate show it, insane that a, in a baseball stadium punk band is going to play a tiny show uh, this is awesome. Cannibal Corpse, yet again, astounding new album. They never stopped touring. Cannibal Corpse, Municipal Waste, Immolation, and uh, I think Morbicon, if I'm not mistaken. What a crazy show that is. That looks just absolutely bestial. That's taking place in Europe. Would love to go that. We'll try to cover it with our European folks. Uh, also, also, I mentioned briefly last week, but I'm going to just reassert this again. We called it. We broke the news that Shadows Fall had just played a 20th anniversary show for the uh, the War Within album, 20 years old this year in September. They're going to do at least one more show this year. We haven't heard any others, but they're going to do at least one more show where they do the full album playthrough. And that is going to be at the Worcester Palladium in December. Check out the link in our description for the details on that. But uh, they haven't formally announced it, but Brian said it at the show. Omar was there, so it must be true. I'm going to stick with it. Okay, moving along. Let's fire it up. Uh, this tour is unbelievably sick. Uh, holy cow. Uh, another banger. Decapitated, Septic Flesh, Cataclysm, and Allegion. We're going to talk about them in a second. This tour looks nuts. It's kicking off in Santa Ana, California very soon. Uh, maybe the death metal tour of the year for the USA, depending on that summer slaughter lineup, right? Right, Scooter? Right. Dave at 1588 is here. Hi, Dave. All right. Stiff Little Fingers, if you like some punk rock, they have announced a very cool tour of the U.S. with direct support from Ricky Warwick. Ricky's been sick recently. He did a St. Patrick's Day mini weekend tour of his solo stuff. We've got a new solo album coming out soon. He's also in Black Star Riders. Uh, and has been in Thin Lizzy also. So uh, Stiff Little Fingers and Ricky Warwick for some good old punk rock, especially some Irish punk rock from Ricky. I'm all about it. Also, also, this is pretty cool. Elder has announced they just got off tour with Tool. We're going to talk about that later in the show. But um, Elder has announced this uh, weekend where they're participating in the Sabretooth. It's not a festival, but the Sabretooth show. 
Elder, Blackwater, Holy Light, who we love at Fade Tooth on Friday, May 31st. Frankie and the Witch Fingers, Death Valley Girls, Low Hums, and Manic Pixie Dreamboat taking place at the Spanish Ballroom. That looks like a great show. I love Elder. They got a new single out. They got a bunch of new merch out. And they're working on a new album. Another band with Stoned in their name and uh, following right alongside of Elder is Stoned Jesus. Stoned Jesus has picked up a 15th anniversary tour run of dates in Europe. Mondo Drag, Dope Lords, and The Abbey are all opening. Kicking off uh, October the 10th in Berlin and ending in Leipzig, but doing a whole UK, Germany, Netherlands, Switzerland, France, Austria, Czech Republic. So stay tuned. We'll probably resurface this flyer again a few times this year. Uh, this is a bummer. Candy, due to a family medical emergency, has canceled their upcoming tour. This poster, thank you to Lamb Goat. Andy Rodriguez 13 is here. Hello. Uh, K Dog 723 is here. I'm also sometimes known as K Dog. I'm Keefe. George Trujillo. Rocky Goad. So Candy is a badass hardcore band, and they had to cancel their current tour. So hopefully everybody's okay and they rebook it soon. Moving along, I shared this on uh, Instagram overnight. I laugh when my music scares people. What band that you listen to scares people the most? Drop a comment right now, and maybe we'll send you something for free. The new Allegion. It's coming up, bro. It's coming up. That song is a banger. When Greg Burgess says, this is one of the most rewarding and challenging songs I've ever made, says that, stop and go listen to it. Not stop watching the show, but stop and go listen to it. 35 people are watching this live stream. You are outstanding. Golf clap. A slow clap and stand up and clap like the gif. Cryptopsy won the Juno Award. The Junos are the Canadian versions of the Grammys, in case you don't know. And they won the best metal or hard music album of the year. I think we should just call all music hard music now. Uh, and I'll knock rock, bro. Uh, I'm such a big fan. Uh, War Kid is here. I think that's War Kid. Um, so, yeah. Uh, by the way, Cryptopsy in winning beat out one of the toughest fields. I don't care about award shows, but like it just feels like the Junos are a little more sensible than the Grammys or other ones. They beat Voivod, who are a past winner. They beat Ken Mode, who are a past winner. They beat Danko Jones, hugely respected rock artist in Canada. And uh, uh, I forgot the fourth band, but it's nuts. Like, who they beat is crazy that they beat them. So shout out to Cryptopsy. Always a forever favorite of Ghost Cult. All right, all right. Metallica, it's not the news without some Metallica news. Uh, Greg Fiddleman has been on the Metallica podcast the last few weeks. And he said any hatred directed at the band, he would prefer it if it's just directed at him for the production of the Metallica albums, including the infamous Death Magnetic clipping. He addressed it the last couple of episodes. He talked about working with Rick Rubin as kind of apprenticeship. He talked about live mixing the band. You know, the band, you can go buy a live recording of every Metallica show they ever do now. Uh, not just past ones, but Greg Fiddleman uh, manages the team that records these live from the soundboard and then sells them to the fans. Uh, I bought a few, and they were very high quality for what they are, recorded in arenas and stadiums. So Metallica is uh, kicking off a tour in less than three weeks, uh, their new leg of their tour in Europe with Pantera and Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, just a word. Again, don't care about award shows all that much, but this is the fan ballot for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't care about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame but that much, but I do like bullshitting about it. I have resigned myself that Dave Matthews is probably getting in. I think he's in the hall of very mid guy that sells a lot of records because he makes very safe music for bored people. Shockingly, Ozzy is number two. I'm still shocked, even though he has millions of fans because of the Osborne show. Millions of fans. Uh, second place in the fan voting as of a few days ago. Border somehow. Peter Frampton, no. Cher, okay, fine. Lenny Kravitz, love you. Mariah Carey, obviously going to get in. And then the fan vote doesn't really count. The fan vote counts for 1% of all the things. Omar, just as a note, Pags is in the show. I'll make a check-in on Instagram when I get off the show, when I can. Uh, even though i got to hit the bricks. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know if you care about the Rock Hall. I really hope Ozzy gets in as a solo artist. He's already in with Black Sabbath, but who knows, right? I don't know if he's going to actually get in. This one made everybody mad. This was the Get Mad at Kifi post of the week. Soul Glow played NPR's Tiny Desk Music show. Soul Glow is a power violence hardcore band from the Baltimore 
Philly area. I think Philly. And NPR touted this as the first ever true hardcore band to play the, the, the play Tiny Desks concert series. And everybody got up in their feelings and get angry at me. I just quoted NPR's post about them playing, and they claimed that a mosh pit broke out, although when you see the video of the songs they posted, it wasn't much moshing, but they claimed it was moshing. Uh, I understand that Turnstile has played the Tidy Desk concert. I understand that Idols has played the Tiny Desk concert. Turnstile it is, was a hardcore band traditionally. They don't really make strictly hardcore music anymore. That That's all they do. They don't. When you have music and Taco Bell commercials and you make songs that sound like Jane Says by Jane's Addiction, you're not that hardcore anymore. Idols is really a pop punk band that's very political, like a British Green Day. I don't consider them heavy or hardcore or power violence. They're punk, but they're not hardcore punk. So splitting hairs and genre tags to yell at me on Reddit and call me names, it's pretty dumb. Anyway. Just, just having my say here. Just having my say. Raquel Figlo, I think, is lurking on Facebook. Thank you for that like, Raquel. Good to see you, homie. There's a story involving you, one of your artists in a second. In a few seconds. Static X celebrated 25 years of Wisconsin Death Trips release this week. And to celebrate, they released a documentary about that album. They are on tour right now with Seven Dust Across America going through another month at least. So definitely catch uh, Static X if you need some more evil disco in your life. I know I do. Elf and Liquid Death, man. This also got people angry. Uh, so Liquid Death and Elf Cosmetics, which is apparently a very fine cosmetics brand, teamed up to put out what they're calling corpse paint makeup. It's a makeup kit that comes in a coffin. It's limited edition. Elf is apparently very fancy makeup. Liquid Death, as you know, is the kings of sustainability and delicious, refreshing water and recyclable cans. And they called this kind of a goth look. And so people were angry because Corpse Paint is not necessarily goth. I think they watched too many Portlandia episodes. Um, Skull of Parade Drums is here. What's up, Skull of Parade Drums? Uh, Paul82 is here. Brooklyn is still here. Public Defender is here. James Martinez. A lot of TikTokers. What up, what up? So people were very angry at this, but, you know, I thought, you know, there were like influencers who suddenly did corpse paint. I know it's for clicks. It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with black metal. It has nothing to do with goth lifestyle or music, which is all having a resurgence right now because of things like Sick New World and things. But I just think it, like you got to have fun and lighten up in your life. And we have some more Elf and Liquid Death content coming in the next few weeks. Stay tuned. But anyway, I think it's pretty fun. Also, also just a reminder, Tiamat is going to be re-releasing their classic album, Clouds. They really, their early uh, Tiamat Death Doom records are uh, like at the upper echelon of, of the genre of, of death metal records and black and death metal and doomish records. More do they became more doom over time with their next record, Wild Honey. But Clouds is getting a re-release for the first time on vinyl in a long time, not ever, but in a long time, remastered, all the things, vinyl variants, limited edition, go get it. Very cool. Also, also, this is a big surprise. This news came down today. Uh, I did get sent a press photo of Dan Lilker, by the way. But this is Frankie Bello of Anthrax as shot by our wonderful Isabel Cataguy from Arizona. Her and her partner, Jesse Roberts, review shows for us in, in that area and other places. And it was announced today that Frank Bello is sitting out the upcoming Anthrax tour dates. Anthrax is doing a headline tour of South America. They have a later in the year tour with Testament and Creator. They have a bunch of metal festivals this spring and fall, this spring and summer. And Frankie's going to sit out those. Uh, didn't say why, but there he's coming back. He's not out of the band. He's just taking a hiatus. Got some personal stuff. And Dan Lilker, the original basis of Anthrax, you know him probably best beside being the original basis of Anthrax for being an SOD and Brutal Truth and Total Fucking Destruction and a bunch of other incredible death metal bands. So that's going to be fun. Uh, we were joking in a text thread recently. Uh, my friends and I, who are Anthrax stands and fans, that like maybe they're going to break out like some early, early Anthrax stuff with Dan. I was like, I don't think so. Anthrax doesn't change up the set list all that much. I'd love to hear some SOD. Anthrax has played March of the SOD very often. So best of luck uh, to Frankie, who's one of my heroes as a dude and a bassist, and uh, it's psyched to see Anthrax play some shows with Dan. Stranger things have happened. Joey Vera is too busy to do all these jobs. But also about Anthrax-related personnel, uh, two things here 
Uh, Charlie Pinante, who is also the drummer in Pantera now, and whatever goes by Pantera, the Pantera tribute band, whatever, a tribute to Pantera, Pantera. Uh, Charlie Benante did a Drumeo hour-long video session where he broke down iconic Anthrax songs and Pantera songs. It's really great. He also could do a guitar one, as you know, probably has written the majority of Anthrax riffs and songs. Scott has written the majority other riffs and lyrics. So between the two guys, Scott and Charlie, they are Anthrax more than anybody else to me. Sappy Sappy is here. Juan Moldvar 5830 is here. So, and then this is really interesting. I didn't want to like throw in another photo at the last second, but we got a comment today from Chad Gray of Mudvayne and also Hell Yeah saying, you know, Hell Yeah had Vinny Paul as a drummer. And he was like, Vinny would not have been on board with this Pantera reunion. I think the time for that was a year ago before the first shows. I think, you know, if you want to be a hater, if you don't think Philip deserves, you know, your time, if you think Rex is not worth it, if you think this is not what Vinny wanted, Vinny had plenty of chances when he was alive to make sure legally this never happened, the Pantera, you know, Pantera shows without him and, and Daryl. And the minute he passed, Rita, he left Rita his share of the band and Rita signed off on it immediately. And, you know, the, very lucrative for the band. If you don't like it, fine, don't go. Um, but for Chad to have a comment now, you should have commented a year ago, just like people were taking shots at, at, at Philip at the end of the year. Like, you know, Philip deserves all the, the grief for everything bad he's ever done, but like he's been for what it's worth, a solid citizen for the last eight or nine years with his mouth shut. And he's done a very great job with this Pantera thing, for whatever you want to say. So, and down is about to come back with like a new record or EP or something. So I don't know, Chad. I love you, bro, but like, nah, not feeling it. Not feeling the comments. Also, also, this is great. Poppy and Bad Omens. Bad Omens like probably one of the biggest bands right now in all of heavy music. Uh, Baddie Core is what Finn McKenty calls them. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what that is. But uh, heavy bands that girls like. I think that's really sexist and stupid, but whatever. Um, hot Thought Girls on TikTok who love... Sleep Token and Bad Omens and stuff. Uh, they had a song la late last year with Poppy, who then went on tour with them. Poppy is currently on tour opening for Event Sevenfold. And so their song, Van or V-A-N, was on a single release, and then they went and toured and played it live. And now they put out a live performance video from Europe. They just did Europe. Uh, more Bad Omens stuff coming soon. More Poppy stuff coming soon. So very exciting times. Poppy's last record was a banger. Fu Manchu, man, I was waiting for this. Fu Manchu hasn't had a new record in six years. They announced a brand new record today from their own record label at the Dojo. And uh, I'm super excited about this. New album, new single and video, new tour dates, Fu Manchu in 2024. I'm here for it. I have yet to hear the song, but I'm excited for the song, for the song's existence, if that makes sense. And a little sniffles. Oh, Scooter, if you're still here. Allegion, this is Ezra Haynes of Allegion. They dropped a brand new single and a music video, Iridescent. I have one word for you for this music video. Glizzy's going wild. Uh, Glizzy's, yes, that is mustard. He is spreading around everywhere like a crazy person. Uh, and that's the song that Greg called Iris Iridescent, Greg Burgess, friend to the show of Ghost Cult. And, and in general, Allegion has been friends of ours uh, all the way back. We supported them. They supported us. They dropped this new song and video. They are heading on that tour with uh, Decapitated, Septic Flesh, and Cataclysm. And they are finished recording their brand new album, which I think we will either get in late this year or early next year. So very, very hype. Also, also, this is super cool. This is a new band called Wretched Blessing from two of our favorite bands in the whole underground metal world, Yaucha and Immortal Bird. I probably said that wrong, uh, but... Uh, they announced a new self-titled EP and a new single, uh, Spurious Ovation. And this is formed in Chicago by Kion Vaziri of Yaucha and Coliseum and Ray Amitai of Immortal Bird and Thrasa Blatt. Super excited. I also think there's a new Immortal Bird music in the works, but no official word yet. Just guessing. Sorry uh, to get you excited, but I'm very excited to check this out. This sounds great. Decibel premiered the single Spurious Ovation, so you know it probably slaps. That's what the kids say. This slaps. Guys, we're blasting through this show today. We're blasting through. We're going to do shorter ones, I promise, after the last few weeks. We're long. The Lance Martyr. 
Ghost Cult's favorite Australian metalcore band of all, has dropped a brand new single, Antidote, and a visualizer, like a cool video, lyric video, that kind of looks like The Matrix, which I just went and saw the 25th anniversary of The Matrix. It's coming up in a few days, and we're going to talk about that soundtrack being huge. And uh, maybe we'll do some special content around that in a couple of days. Very exciting. All right. Also, also, favorites and past Ghost Cult interviewees, Heavy Temple, announced their new album, dropped a new single. This photo is by Mistress Lady Nighthawk's mom, which I think is awesome. And uh, get ready, but like their last record was unbelievable. And now they took a whole left turn to do this very witchy, uh, almost like uh, kind of feels like Coven, a Coven tribute. Not the whole record, but the song that I heard sounded a lot like Coven, which is the highest compliment I could give because we love Coven here at Ghost Cult. As you know, some of you watching on YouTube probably came to us either through our, our huge viral sensation interviews with High Lung, Jinx Dawson of Coven, Fat Mike and No Effects. So, We've had a few others, 1349, uh, you know, Greta Van Fleet in the early days we talked to. So, you know, some of our interviews on YouTube, you should check them out. They do very, very well. Joe Watts 27, Eric the Viking Dude is here. Hi, Eric the Viking Dude. I hope you're as cool as your cool name, Eric the Viking. Um, you know, we try whenever possible, Ghost Cult, to, uh, you know, highlight, uh, you know, sort of unsung bands. And I feel like, you know, a lot of bands don't get enough credit or, you know, it's hard to break out of the underground. Uh, and, and we cover a lot of extreme black and death metal bands. Most of our reviews are black and death metal and other kinds of metal. Um, but we, we sometimes come across cool underground bands. And I just want to uh, shout out this band, Red Handed Denial. Took me a few tries to get that. They dropped a brand new single and video for their song Parasite. And their new album, kind of a genty progressive metal band. A Journey Through Virtual Dystopia is slated for May 24th via Paid Vacation Records, kind of a uh, not as well-known label, but very cool. So pay attention to Red Handed Denial if you like progressive metal, sort of bands that would play at Arc Tangent Festival like uh, Tesseract, kind of similar to them. Uh, here's another one, an absolute favorite of Ghost Cults, Eivor who is the Scandinavian folk, pagan folk artist, has announced she signed to Season of Mist. She has been an independent artist for her whole career until now, but signed to Season of Mist, the home of High Lung and many other killer uh, Norse folk bands, black metal bands, death metal bands. Um, Ivor is incredible. She, You probably know her best from her work on games and movies, uh, like Gods of War, by the way. She's, the, she's in the music of Gods of War. She helped create it. So, you know, just pretty amazing. And uh, announced a new record, put out a new song, The Whole Shebang of Bang. Check it out. I would love to interview her. We've never had the chance. Um, we would love to. We've covered her live for Ghost Cult in Europe, but never to talk to. So I hope it happens this time. Also, also just a reminder, the Sasanta tour is around the corner, but the Sasanta EP is out tomorrow or today as you're watching this, if it's this weekend. And I'm going to take a stab at reviewing this. This is one brand new song each from Pussifer, Primus, and The Perfect Circle, the three bands on the Sasanta tour. I believe we're going to cover that tour in Arizona. Stay tuned for the coverage about middle of next month. Also, also, this one blew me away. Uh, this is some great reporting over by our friends at Metal Injection. Uh, butthole surfers have been offered upwards of six figures Nine six figures to reunite and tour or play festivals. And according to Paul Leary, the guitarist and co-founder, and Gibby Haynes, the singer and co-founder, they have turned it down. They do not want to revisit the band. There's no amount of money that would make them unretire. Uh, they almost overdosed and died a million times on drugs. Electric Larry Land, everybody knows the song Pepper. I don't mind the sun sometimes. The images it shows. Basically, they were like, they heard Beck do Loser. And they made the same song and they had a huge hit with it. They like, we can do that. Why don't we do that? We've been doing punk rock and weirdo metal for years and years. A lot of bands are coming back. Jesus Lizard is, teach is teasing a comeback. A lot of bands are reuniting. Uh, Butthole Surfer is not reuniting. So just keep that in mind. We're almost done here, folks. We're just plugging away. Here is Rotting Christ, Greece's black metal kings. Rotting Christ have debuted the second single off their upcoming album, Sharice. Uh, their new album, which I cannot say in Greek, but it's Pro Sistoi. I'm not sure what that means. That's also coming out on the very venerable and aforementioned season of this label. Very exciting. Volbeat Rocker is here. Hey, Volbeat Rocker, good to see you again. 
Uh, I hope you have subbed to our channel. I will sub back to you if you have. I think you have. There was a lot of jokes. We just did the story about um, Frank Bello not touring with Anthrax. And they're like, what's next? Johnny Guitar is going to get too busy with Shadows Fall. John Denai and uh, Kajiano is going to come back. I doubt it. But anyway, Rod and Christ, really cool. New single. Now, uh, Black Top Mojo, if Raquel Figlo is still lurking around somewhere on the Book of Faces, Raquel is the publicist for Black Top Mojo, one of my favorite rock bands of the last decade. Their new album, Pollen, comes out next week, and they drop the brand new single, the post-grungy sort of lamentation on, on relationships and why they don't work in the digital age. I can't tell. And this uh, Matt James is one of the best voices ever. I'm really trying to hone in and get an interview with Matt James, the singer of Black Top Mojo. I'm going to shoot for that in early next week. I love this meme. We're almost at the end of the show. Evil death tones be like, be loud and park. Uh, I like puns. Things that are puns are funny to me, and I like them. So, away. I don't care where, just far. Anyway, Chino for life. It's time to talk about New Music Friday, one of my favorite segments of the entire show. The entire show. Let's quickly first focus on the albums we reviewed this week. I'm going to just read off the list really quickly. I had it lurking on the other screen here. So, uh, Next, these this next couple of months has so many releases. It's it's bizarre. Um, coming out this week that we reviewed that you can read on the site include albums by Cunts, Coffin Storm, Coffins, the legendary Japanese death metal band, Mario Lolly and the Rubber Snake Charmers. Those guys are basically Yawning Man plus Caius plus a bunch of other people. Mutilation Barbecue for some death fucking metal. We just put that on the site up earlier. Sons of Alpha Centauri, sort of post-Stoner Rock, featuring Jonah Matranga of Far. Some 41's new album is out this week, While She Sleeps, already announced. And then let's just quickly jam through a few more releases that came out this week that you might want to know about. Let's see, where is my list? Where did my list go? Where do Broken Hearts go? My list vanished. Oh, no. They're coming to take my list away. Ha ha. Oh, here it is. All right. I got it. So, uh, also coming out this week, Bob Dylan, the great British hardcore punk metal band, Black Absinthe. Boundaries on Three Dot Recordings. That's the uh, label owned by uh, uh, Misha Mansour from Periphery. Uh, Can Servo. Uh, already mentioned a few of these. Cryo Shock, uh, Darkest Straw, Deadhead, Divided, Endless Loss. Edson Williams of Monolord has his debut solo album. He gave us a funny comment during the week that he thought it was funny that his band was in here for all these brutal bands. Frail Body on Deathwish Records, uh, Deathwish Inc., Lillian Axe Box Set, Malthus, great metal band, Max Boogie Overdrive, No Man, The Quill. Ren Marabou and the Berserkers, uh, Septage, and Wrist Meat Razor, and Vorga. So a lot, and Verwad. Oh, Verwad is an incredible black metal band. What a good band that is, if you like the black metal. Uh, I'd like to cover more black metal. These guys don't want to interview much. What can I say? All right, and now it's time for a look in our mailbag. This is a fun one this week. I don't need the second camera angle this week for this guy. Uh, we mentioned Elder earlier in the show, and Elder just did their biggest tour ever, opening for Tool in arenas, and they released, uh, you know, help Elder out. They're making a new record, and like I mentioned, they have a one-off week in the shows and a few things here and there. They are trying to get, low, get rid of their tour bird, so I helped them out. It was on sale for, I think, 10 bucks plus shipping. I'm not buying a lot of merch these days or albums. Stuff's getting sent to me, luckily, but here's this cool, I wanted to commemorate, we covered the tour. And I wanted to cover this elder, commemorate this. I have many elder records and shirts and tapes and things. And I wanted to rep this shirt and rep this band that I absolutely am proud of and love. I've interviewed Nick DeSalvo a couple of times. And he also has been really nice to, yup, elder. Kevin Berube is here. And he says elder is near Boston. Uh, Nick now lives in Germany. And I think at least one other member has moved away from the Boston area. But technically, this came from the Boston area, this shirt. So their merch is still there. Their headquarters is probably still there. Dude, Bob Villain is sick, Blackie Chan, 888, or, or they or them. And um, 
yeah, Bob Dylan's great. I really wanted to get an interview with them, but uh, it did not happen. Uh, but anyway, Elder Shirt in the books. Super proud to have that one. Support that band. Support underground bands. I know they opened for Tool, but like, you know, they also had to sell their shirts at the same price as a Tool shirt, and that's no fun. And then have to deal with the merch cut that Tool is okay taking because Tool sells all their merch out. So, you know, support these bands. Even when the baby bands become grown-up bands, you can still keep supporting them and keep it true. That's just my two cents. That's what I love to do. Look at this in a very manageable one hour. We did the show in one hour. Pray, I'm going to pat myself on the back and maybe break my hand a little bit in the process. That's the show. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so stoked to be here every week with you, like Fred Rogers used to say. I really appreciate each and every one of you that have watched this thing that watch these videos, that go on YouTube, that drop comments, that give us suggestions, that give us grief, that, that you know, fry and roast us. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. I appreciate all of you. Any way it comes. We're here for the long haul. Shout out to my partner, Omar Cordy. Shout out to my partner, Steve Tovey, the senior editor of Ghost Cult in the UK, and everybody else that works with us. We got Ghost Cult this out at shows all weekend covering metal. And you have a great weekend, too. Be safe out there. Enjoy your stuff. Pick up some new records and support the underground. As we say every week at this juncture of the show, you have been watching the Ghost Cult weekly ritual live stream. It's a tough time in the world. So please get out there and take care of yourselves. Take care of each other and stay as metal as humanly possible. And we're out. I'm going to dance a jig on the way out of here like Joe Hollenbeck.